The Bob Levin Award for Short Feature pays tribute to a true writer's editor. Bob Levin understood the power of the story being told and also the nuance of each word choice. Soft-spoken, thoughtful, and wise, Bob was the sort of editor every journalist wants, someone who could help you find the best expression of your story in a voice you never quite realized you had. This award is sponsored by The Globe and Mail. When the Humboldt Broncos bus collided with a tractor trailer, killing 16 members of the junior hockey team, an entire nation rallied around the victims and their families. Jamie Ross of the Globe and Mail turned a major national story into a deeply personal one. His essay on what playing junior hockey meant to him as he was transitioning from youth to adult and trying to find his way in life is a love letter to the game and the people who make it happen. Judges said Ross's use of everyday words and subdued emotional tone helped readers understand how teenage players come to rely on so many others to be there for them. John Wells of the Hamilton Spectator weaves a poignant tale of two Canadians who worked more than two decades to get an American off death row. Tracy Lamoury and Dave Parkinson found out about Jimmy Dennis after he was sentenced to death for a murder he insisted he didn't commit. Their campaign for justice finally worked. An appeal judge concluded that Dennis had been wrongly convicted. In a clear, matter-of-fact style, Wells builds his story to a surprising final revelation that when Dennis got out of prison, his first call was not to his family but to the couple of bleeding hearts in Hamilton who had fought so hard for his freedom. One day last July, police had to shut a rural road in southern Ontario due to an influx of motorists stopping to take pictures in a sunflower field. What started out as a short story about a traffic jam became a postmodern tale about the power of social media to spring mobs to life. Patrick White of the Globe and Mail discovered that 7,000 cars carrying at least 14,000 people had shown up to trample over the field in a quest for the perfect selfie. A zombie apocalypse, as one of the farmers put it. By turns comic and tragic, this short piece about bedlam in a sunflower field is a cautionary tale for our selfie-obsessed times. Judges said, White's piece was a modern nightmare brilliantly written, full of wit and humor. And the Bob Levin Award goes, uh, for short feature, goes to Patrick White of the Globe and Mail. Uh, that is Nancy White, by the way. No relation. Uh, who's the wife of uh, Bob Levin. Um, and I, I, I really want to focus on Bob tonight. Uh, he was a great friend and a great colleague. Um, I'm elated to get this award. Uh, but I'm also sad um, because uh, Bob's not here. Um, he... Uh, I think Globe editors must, be, must have been a little concerned when Bob took his leave from the Globe due to health reasons a few years ago because he had his fingerprints on so many national newspaper awards over the years. Um, and, and sadly, he's not with us anymore. Uh, but he cared about, I remember getting called up to Bob's desk after writing an 80 word brief and he just, on deadline. And the guy wanted to just talk about the meaning of the word prison. You know, do you really mean what you mean here? Uh, and he would do the same with an 8,000 word feature as he would do with that 80 word brief. And he, uh, he taught me so much and I'm so grateful uh, for everything that he taught me and so many others at the Globe and Mail. Uh, 
Also to, to Nicole McIntyre, thank you for this assignment. I know there's, uh, wherever you are. Uh, I, it, it was a bit of an offbeat story and you just said, you know, go down the highway and see what you get and uh, there was a lot to get there. Um, and, I, and thanks to the Globe, uh, we continue to, to flourish uh, in a, at a very tough time in the industry. Um, and I thank you to Philip and David, uh, Christine, and everybody else who um, really encourages quality journalism day after day after day. Thanks so much. <laughs>